honest. Hello and welcome back to Lazarus Lodge Garage and what I always forget to say or you know put across is uh, if you like what you're seeing do like and subscribe because I never remember to say it and you know that's what you're meant to do on the tube anyway the engine is back in the MG the last bit you saw of this is we were you know slamming it in and nothing was going on um, I'm not gonna lie to you because we don't do that kind of thing. It was a fight, and it didn't go very well at all. There was much swearing and inflicting of physical violence on inanimate objects. But we got there in the end. Um, it wasn't, you know, I've done a few clutches, and I was expecting it to be a bit of a pain, but um, this was more of a pain. This was physical pain, mental pain, draining the awful. But we did get it in the end. <sighs> and because this isn't my car, my brother's carried on doing bits of it, he's put most of this all back together, so apologies we didn't show all of that, but that's just the nature of this, how it goes. And also filming things is a pain when you're in a really bad mood. So um, we've got it all back together, what I do need to do um, is bleed the clutch, um, so we're going to put a new um, clutch shooty outy Slaves in the um, So we'll go and do that and then we'll see how well that works. I've also got to tune up the carbs a little bit because um, that's still out of whack. So we'll go and have a look and we'll see what happens. So there's the slave cylinder. So what I'm going to do is crack the pipe off first while it's still well and truly bolted up onto the uh, gearbox. I've already taken the pin out. There's just a pin that goes through from the uh, pin in there and the arm for the clutch. Um, so I've taken that out, that's somewhere down there. Just loosen that off and then we'll take the um, take those two bolts out and we can spin it off and uh, have a look at it closer. Right, 11 sixteenths ish. Loser. Oh, well, I'm tight. It's going to drain the system of old brake fluid. And what alerted me to this, you can't quite see it here, yeah, but if you look down in the hole, it's wet in there. And that's not water, it's obviously been there a long time. Let me pull this out. There you go. Look. So that's brake fluid, it's not, not going to come out of there, that's just where the pin sits, so um, that means this this is the seals in here are leaking, so I thought it's worth just taking it off and putting a new one on, they're not very expensive, so it seems to work okay, which is good, but it wouldn't have worked for a great deal longer, so you can see that's all that juice has come out the end, so yeah, we'll go and get the new one. I've also checked, and I don't have any copper washers that are the right size. So we're going to anneal this one, or anneal, anneal, whatever it is. And basically heats it up till it changes colour, it becomes softer again. So uh, we'll give that a go and reuse it for now. Kill 
some weeds at the same time. And not the new one. Yeah. That sits like that. So that's the highest point on the um, on the cylinder because that's otherwise if that was at the bottom trying to bleed it and you know it's the wrong way around the air goes up so we'll just put that in there loosely take the bung out and we'll see if we can um, spin it on with the annealed copper washer and let's uh, see what we can do well, we see the thought is in this instance being that we're using the original hose um, there's a possibility that when we wind it on it's not going to stop in the same place we're going to be trying to twist the hose so um, we sort of want to try and avoid that but we might have to loosen the, hull, uh, the, uh, the nut that holds the hose on and then we start breaking things off and we'll just see what happens How's that going to hang? Not terribly at this juncture. Well, where was that then? Have I just been a total... Eh, <sighs> uh, not great. But... We can, we might just try it, chuck it on, see what happens. I've got a new pin as well to go in the end. Uh, but we'll put this on first and try tightening those up. Well, it's worth at this point, but we might be able to take off and spin it now. There we go. Let's try that. Oh yeah, that's a bit better. Still not completely of a relaxed hose position but it's a significantly better one than trying to be around here and that's the that's the problem with doing what I was doing without loosening this up here so what I'll probably do is do that like that for now because it's a fairly fairly nice hose position and then um, bolt it down tighten it up and then I'll try and loosen that top one I would like to probably replace the hose anyway. I'm just doing this because I had one of these kicking about. So uh, we'll do that for now and we'll probably replace the hose because I imagine it would want doing. You know when you do things and you know exactly what the result's going to be, but you, you do them anyway. Yep. Yeah, not a massive fan of that. But. That's fine, it's not too tight, but it's got a bit of a twist in it and I not, don't like it very much, but we should change that at some point. Sooner rather than later. So you can get the pin in. Not likely at this position, but we'll give it a go. Screwdriver for it or something. Oh, there we go, that's it, gone. And it's just got a washer and a split pin that we'll put on. We won't do the split pin just yet, just in case it all goes pear shaped or it leaks or something, because you can't always trust brand new bits these days. Uh, I always like to put the split pin through this wrap as well, because if the washer and 
I always like to put the clearest pin through this way because if this split pin came off for some reason it's not just going to drop out the bottom yeah, it'll stay there so this is good that's nice so now we're going to work out bleeding it so what I'm going to bleed it with got this as a motorbike brake bleeder I think it's you know finest Chinese one but um I bought it a few years ago to do the do a clutch on a transit van actually front wheel drive one and it worked quite well um even though it is marketed for bleeding motorbike brakes um so we'll give it a go on this and uh, see if we can suck some fluid through with it it all goes into that all quite quite nice quite handy sort of size for this kind of thing so we'll give it a go I wouldn't um want to do a full brake system with it that would you fill that up in no time and it'd just be a faff but um for this thing where it's only got a tiny little master cylinder it should work i think i film and try and get this in here at the same time unlikely oh oh missed mainly well there won't be any paint left around there anyway that's not important here we go yeah so that's set up just stick that end on the nipple and squeeze and it fills that up that way around so we'll uh, give it a go and see what happens need to get some juice down it oh here we go took a little while but we got there so in light of not having a a um Thing. We're just going to use this jug of brake fluid, chuck that in there, just so it doesn't try and suck back any juices. And we're going to give that a go. All right, can you pump it up a few times, please? Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay, can you hold it down? Hold it. Yeah. And up. And down. And up. Down. Pump it a bit. Yeah. Keep going. All right, hold. Yeah. All right, up. Uh, keep keep going, I'll just check the juice level. Starting to feel a bit better. Yeah, we're pretty much the, the force back against me. That's good. Not the greatest one, but definitely that. I can go, hold it down. Wow, well, yeah, yeah. Okay, that pump it up again. Okay, well, we'll leave it at that for a sec. See, yeah, you'll have a feel in a sec if you like. Mm. So we're going to put the coolant in, put new hoses on there and here. We haven't put this on yet because, well, that clip's broken. And the heater box is higher, slightly higher than the radiator. So I want to leave that top hose off. So then hopefully we don't get an air leak in the heater box. We'll have it open, start filling it up slowly and um, see what happens. Um, if we start getting fluid out the top, we know we're, we're not far off. So uh, we'll... Go and find a thing and fill it up. This is just pre-mix 50-50 ethylene glycol stuff. Well, that's on well. Just because I'm lazy. Try and pour this in with one hand. Oh, missed. It's going well. All right, here we go. So the radiator's up, I might just put that hose back on there because it hasn't it's sort of slightly moist up this end, but we haven't got anything yet. So I'll just chuck that on there just so we don't have juice spurting out. 
and we'll try and go for it. Yeah. yeah. Here's the uh, bonnet prop again. Okay. Yep, the uh, heater valve's leaking, hence why we've got a bit of rag under there. Ready? Yeah, go for it, see what happens. <laughs> There we go. That's nice. Leave it there. No, that's fine. I'll see if we can get a little bit of heat in it and see if the water starts flowing. Because at the moment the thermostat's closed and we're not going to get full circulation. So hopefully it warms up a bit, although it's starting to go flow around a little bit in there, so we'll see what happens. Pretty nice though. Hang on, I've got an idea. That's leaking more, but as you can see, oh, can't quite see, that's now flowing down there. The level's dropped, the thermostat's open, so we are off and rolling. Right up. Marvellous. Right, well, it's warming up then. I've got this an old uh, carb balancer. So you put it over the intake. So it's gone to four. And at the moment the idle's a bit high. So you want to set your idle down to where you want it. But you need the two balance. So you want it at a time. See, that's also on about four. But if I back one carb down, then they'll be out of whack. So you need to do them one at a time, sort of balance them as you go. I'll show you what I mean. So I've brought this front carb down a bit and now you see it's drawing three and the rear one's still on four so now they're out of balance. But we do want to bring the idle down so I'm going to bring the rear one down and then we'll put it back on. Need a different screwdriver. It's already starting to sound a little bit better. Get that back on it. This is why I put the bonnet prop back on as well, because right on the way. Okay, that's still drawing just under four. That's bang on three, so we can go a bit more. And this is literally just the idle stop screw. This is how balancing carbs is. more. I just adjusted that and now it's that's a three and a half ish and that's almost about right. Do you see where I'm getting with this? You just adjust one and the other. I still gotta do the um the mixture, idle mixture a bit it's a bit vague but now they're both sort of in keeping with each other. B-series. Well, it's not that old. It's only about 20 years old. Well, yeah. remanufactured engine. That's that's it's only got 20,000 on the clock from new. Yes. Lucked out with this one. Oh yeah, running well. We ordered a new one of these, the proper one. This is wrong. We don't know why this is there. 
it doesn't get fit very well this is all ruined so um, we've got the proper rubber one with the round thing coming and yeah then we're getting there hopefully we don't have to take the engine out again because that was painful well not taking it out putting it back in everything went really well yes. apart from getting it back together again yeah. clutch is working well rattle's gone not that you ever saw that or heard it but um yeah marvellous and we'll see you in the next one